Hey guys, welcome back to The Coats Fam. As you can tell by the title of this video, we had our baby and he's perfect. I didn't think this video was gonna go the way that it's about to go. Um, and I'll explain that in just a minute. So before we get into like the birth vlog and the birth story, um, I just wanna quickly introduce you to our little love. I'm not actually gonna put him on camera right now because he's asleep. You will see him shortly, I'm sure. But he was born on Sunday, February 9th at 6.20 a.m. He was eight pounds, 12 ounces, a lot bigger than we thought he was gonna be. Um, and he was 20 inches long. And his name is Cade Michael Coates. So a couple of you actually did guess his name. I gave you guys the clue that it started with a C. Um, so Cade is his first name. It's just a name that we've always loved and it's been really high on our list. It's not super common, it's not too weird, it's nice and short, strong. So Cade is his first name, Michael is his middle name, which is Chris's middle name, and then Coates. So he has the same initials as Daddy, which we thought was kind of neat. So he was born on the 9th, and he has changed our lives forever in the best way possible. Um, all the little cliches that come with parenthood are so true, right? Like, I genuinely feel like my soul changed the second I met him. I told Chris that the other day, and it's, it's so true, and any parent can probably relate. Anyway, so the reason that this video is not gonna go the way that I always thought it would was because prior to having Cade, I watched like, I don't know, 50 to 100 birth vlogs here on YouTube trying to like prepare for any and all situations. Um, so in my mind, I was thinking that I would take the camera out and we'd be able to vlog this whole entire process. Um, however, <laughs> That was not our reality because things went really, really quickly, which I will explain here shortly. Um, and the last thing that was on our minds was picking up the camera. We do have some footage, which I will play here in a minute, of before the hospital and then after the birth because like I said, it was a whirlwind that we didn't pick up the camera from the minute contraction started until he was born. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the footage that we do have right now for you. Um, so I will stop rambling and enjoy. This is not the start to the video that I was anticipating. Yes, it is February 9th, 12.23 in the morning. So it is barely February 9th. I woke up probably like 45 minutes ago, almost an hour ago having contractions and questioning if whether my water broke or not. And now my contractions are every two to three minutes. So we are on our way to the hospital. Um, I've never done this before, so we don't really know Baby. if this is gonna be it or not, but <coughs> we are going to take you along for the ride, so stay tuned. It has to be it. Delay every minute apart. BRB. This is the face of a new mother. How do you feel, babe? I feel like this video was not <laughs> the way I thought it was gonna be. I feel so happy, so lucky. That makes two of us. Perfect. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dude, guys, her labor went super well. Started at what, like 11.30, woke me up having contractions. No, I woke up. I woke up at 11.30 to my water breaking. I was having contractions. The first time I started timing them, they were already three minutes apart for one minute. So we called the hospital and they were like, all right, come in. And when I got here, it was six centimeters. And within 45 minutes, I was 10 centimeters. <laughs> but in that time, I was begging for an epidural because it was obviously so painful because I went the whole 10 without pain meds. And then when I got the epidural, they didn't know I was 10 centimeters and they put it all in and then they said, oh, you're 10 centimeters, time to push. And I couldn't feel anything. So we had to wait like four hours for the epidural to wear off. Hmm. And then he came at 6.20 this morning. Perfect as can be. Nice and healthy. Yeah. <laughs> and it literally was one of the most helpless feelings that I've ever had was sitting on the couch in here while two nurses are trying to help your wife who's probably experiencing level 10 pain that she's never experienced before, that I've never seen anyone experience. Literally screaming, shaking, puking, sweating, 
um, crying, and every time I try to get up and you know do something, I'm like, dude, I, it's hard to sit there and watch your wife be helpless and know that you can't do anything. And every time I try to get up and help the nurses, are like, hey, you need to sit down, <laughs> you know, because they're obviously trained professionals. I'm not. Well, they but were trying to the epidural. <clears throat> yeah, that too. They were trying to put in the epidural, you know, and I like wanted to do anything I could, but they were, you know, they were super friendly and very, they were amazing with Shelly. Um, but yeah, and he finally came, and I got to sit there and, and watch him come, and it was uh, pretty amazing. So. All right, so as you could probably tell by the footage, we had a very um, quick experience and I wanna go into detail, probably more so than I did in the footage. So let's backtrack to February 8th, the day before he's born, it was a Saturday. So we were out for my sister-in-law's like birthday celebration and I looked at Chris at like five o'clock and I'm like, I think he's gonna come tonight. Like things were just feeling different than they ever had before. Um, I almost felt like he was pushing this way because there was no room. And sure enough, that night at 11.30, my water broke when I was sleeping. Um, I wasn't entirely sure it was my water because it, didn't, it wasn't like as big of a gush as I had always pictured, but it was definitely like some somewhat of a gush. It woke me up, right? And so I stood up and Chris was asleep and I'm like, I think I'm having a contraction. So I pulled out my timer, the little contraction timer, and this whole time I'm thinking, okay, these are gonna start 10 minutes apart and then they're gonna get shorter, this is gonna be a while. Well, the second I started timing the contractions, they were three minutes apart. And my doctor told me, if your contractions are five minutes apart, lasting for a minute, for an hour, you need to come to the hospital. So I'm timing them and they're definitely contractions and they're every three minutes and they're 45 seconds to a minute apart. And Chris finally wakes up and I'm like, I think we need to go, I'm not sure. And then I was like, you know what? Like my gut is telling me that we need to go. <laughs> so we grabbed all of our stuff. We grabbed the bags. We called the hospital. We're like, we're on the way. And she was like, eh, I don't know. It's your first baby. Since you think your water broke, come in. Like I could tell she was kind of like, this girl's crazy. She's not gonna have a baby today. Um, so we get in the car and we head to the hospital. On the drive there, my contractions were getting a lot stronger. Definitely painful. Um, and so we showed up to the hospital. <laughs> I'd forgotten my entire wallet, so I didn't have my ID, my insurance, or anything. Luckily, the hospital was amazing, and they're like, you don't need it. We get there, we're the only people in labor and delivery, which was amazing, and they admit me. And at this point in my pregnancy, I had decided, after talking to a bunch of moms, that I did want to get an epidural, um, which was not always my plan. However, a lot of moms that I talked to were like, I've had a baby with it, I've had a baby without it. I highly recommend it. Long story short, my plan going in was that I did want to get the epidural. So I get there and I said, look, I do want to get the epidural. So I know it's two in the, or it's at this point it was 1230 at night. So midnight. Um, I don't know if you have an anesthesiologist here, but if you don't, can you get one like going? Because my contractions were starting to get really strong. Anyway, so we get there, it's 1230. She checks me, I'm six centimeters dilated, which I was not surprised because the Wednesday prior, um, I was already three centimeters dilated at my OB appointment. So she told me I was six and I was like, yeah, figured. Okay, so before the anesthesiologist could come in and give me my epidural, they had to get my blood work done. So they had to order labs. Um, she had to come in, she had to put in the catheter and give me the medicine. Well, from 12.30 to 1.10, 40 minutes that it took for her to get there, I dilated from a six to a 10. <laughs> So I basically went through the entire dilation process naturally and it was excruciatingly painful. <laughs> um, it's so interesting because prior to like birth, I'm always like, well, what do contractions feel like? And you, you genuinely can't describe it until you go through it. The only analogy that I've been able to give people is that when you're watching like a horror movie and you see someone's like limb get cut off or like something like you can't even fathom, like that's the level of pain that I felt. Like it was just something that I couldn't even fathom until having gone through it. So, not to scare anybody away. Anyway, so I'm going through transition and all this stuff, I'm sweating, I'm throwing up between every single contraction, I'm screaming bloody murder. And at this point the anesthesiologist finally came in and she's trying to do like my epidural in my back so I have to be really still. Poor Chris is over on the couch, the nurses were like, you need to sit down because we need to get this epidural in her. So um, I'm screaming, vomiting, <laughs> putting the epidural in, 
and they finally administer the medicine. And my thing about the epidural was I don't want it, I didn't want it to be completely numb. I wanted to be able to move my limbs and feel the pressure. At that point, I didn't mind feeling something. I just didn't want to feel like I was gonna die. And I told her that, however, once they administered the medicine, like I went completely numb. I could not feel anything from like my boobs down. Um, which I think she did because I was screaming so much. <laughs> But that being said, after the, the medicine went through, they checked me and they're like, oh, you're 10 centimeters, you're, you can push. Well, I couldn't because I couldn't feel anything. So essentially we just had to sit there for like four hours and let the medicine wear off. We were doing like put practice pushes during that time, but I couldn't feel anything. The nurse was like, push harder. And I'm like, I can't feel anything. You don't understand. <laughs> um, so that was kind of annoying. Honestly, had I known that I was 10 centimeters before she administered the medicine, I think that I probably would have just said, screw it and let's just go through this natural. But I don't know, who knows? That's not what happened. What happened was I tried to push for four hours and couldn't feel anything. Anyway, so the medicine's finally starting to wear off. He's crowning, the doctor comes in and we push and she says that the cord is wrapped around his neck and he can't get under your pubic bone so we need to do a vacuum delivery and I'm like, at that point, just get this baby here, get him in my arms. So. That all happens, he comes out, and all the nurses were like, whoa, he is way bigger than we thought. And I'm like, you and me both, girl. Um, and there was a respiratory doctor there, so she got the cord off, they checked him, he was great. And then they put sweet baby in our arms, and we cried for about, I don't know, three days. <laughs> so that is the quick and dirty of our actual labor and delivery. Again, not exactly what I was picturing in my mind. It almost happened so fast that I like didn't really have time to process what was going on, which was interesting. But it you can't ever plan for these things and it's just the way that my body wanted to bring him here um, all in all it was like five and a half hours of labor which I know for a first-time mom is super rare so I'm fortunate that it wasn't like extremely long and too grueling those 40 minutes were absolute hell but whatever so worth it in the end the only other part of this journey that I haven't mentioned was that he was jaundiced when he came out so we did have to stay an extra 24 hours um, they put him under the little UV light, which is like essentially a tanning bed. I don't know. It helps to get rid of the bilirubin that are, that's in their blood when they're jaundiced, whatever. Um, it wasn't anything to be worried about. He did that for 24 hours and then we were discharged and then we came home and now we are home and settled in. Today is the 19th. No, today's the 20th. So it's been a solid 10 days since we've been home. Um, we are settling in nicely. Baby is sleeping ish. I mean, he's a newborn, so every two to three hours, but whatever and he's eating really well. I am breastfeeding um, and that's been going really, really, really well for us and I'm very fortunate because I know that's not always the case. Um, and yeah, like I said, we're just settled in. Chris is back to work, hence why I'm filming this alone on the couch, constantly staring at the baby. Sorry, that's why I'm looking over here, he's asleep. Um, I know I said I was gonna show him to you, but he's sleeping so peacefully, so I don't wanna wake him right now, but I will throw in a clip from a video I filmed earlier for my main channel um, so you can get a little sneak peek of his sweet little face. You wanna say hi to the world? This is our sweet baby Cade. Oh, say hi, monkey. Oh, I love you, I love you. Hi, baby. Oh, he get a little bit grumpy when he first wake up. But yeah, we are settled in. I just wanted to get this video filmed and up for you guys because it has been a while since we filmed something, as you can probably imagine why. He's starting to wake up, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, but if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. We do have a slew of videos now that he's here that we want to film for you guys. Nursery tour is coming. We wanna film like 24 hours with a newborn. If there's anything else baby related or just, I don't know, life related that you wanna see, go ahead and leave them down below because I now have a little more time, a little more, not a lot more, <laughs> that I can actually pick up the camera. So. Leave those down below. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. We love you guys so much. I'm so excited to be back picking up the camera. So I hope you enjoy this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye guys.